Hey guys, welcome back to the Malware Analysis Bootcamp. In this video, we're going to be talking about file identification or identifying the various file types that you may be dealing with. All right, so let's start off by understanding uh, the process of identifying the file type and a few notes uh, to take into consideration that will really help you. Uh, and then we'll also take a look at the tools that we will be using, right? So first of all, identifying the file type is extremely important. Why? Uh, this is because it helps us identify the target operating system and the corresponding architecture. Now, you might be thinking, well, why do we need to do this? It sounds or seems pretty simple. Well, uh, in a few short seconds, I'll explain why. Now, an example of a Windows executable that you'll be running into is uh, something called a portable executable, more of which we'll cover later on in this section when talking about static analysis. It is denoted by PE, right? So PE means portable executable. Now a portable executable could be in the form of an EXE, a DLL, it really doesn't matter. All right, now I'll explain why all of this in a few seconds. Now to accurately identify a file type, we need to analyze the file signature. All right, so why do we need to do this? Well, this is, uh, again, to avoid false positives caused by the use of double extensions. And this is something very common with hackers is where they try to change the original extension into something else. And this technique is called uh, double extensions. Right now, this means, for example, if I, if I have an EXE file, uh, potentially malicious exe file I, uh, I i either change the extension to a doc file or i add another extension on top of it so i could say it could be file.exe.doc all right now identifying uh, or using the file signature will really get rid of all of these false positives and will give you a, a an accurate idea of what you're dealing with now the file signature itself usually exists on the file header now the file signature for PE files are represented by hexadecimal values of 4D and 5A or MZ, as I'll show you uh, when we get started uh, in a few in a few minutes. All right, so these are usually found in the first two bytes, so denoted by zero and one. And again, this will all be shown shortly. And uh, PE programs also have the notice uh, the program cannot be run in DOS mode, as I'll show you. And the PE header itself, which we'll talk about later in this uh, section. Uh, is denoted by uh, or is denoted at the offset 5045. All right, now attackers may use archiving or packing to evade signature based identification. All right, which is something that we have to take a look at in its own video where we'll be covering packing and obfuscation. So just keep that in mind that we will be covering that eventually. Now the tools we'll be using, number one is we're going to be using hex uh, D or you can use notepad plus plus, it really doesn't matter. And this essentially is a hex editor, right? And it will allow us to actually view uh, the uh, the PE header and the file header itself so we can perform uh, file uh, signature verification, right? Or to actually check the file signature on these various files. And the next file is going to be called exe info PE. Uh, and this again retrieves the Windows PE header, uh, the Windows PE header information. It also detects the, uh, whether the executable has been packed and also tells us the packer version and how to unpack it, which is fantastic. Uh, the other tools that you can use with that I, pre I, I really like using are PE Studio and CFF Explor Explorer. So uh, these all come pre packaged and pre installed with Flare VM. So let's get started. All right, we are back in Flare VM and we are ready to begin. Now, for the purpose of this section, uh, the section I'm referring to is static analysis. I'm going to be using a sample here and this is a generic a password stealer uh, or credential harvester, if you want to call it. And uh, please do note that this is extremely dangerous, uh, dangerous to execute if you don't know what you're doing. And I'm going to have to put out a notice that I'm not going to be held responsible if you accidentally infect yourself. So do treat the piece of malware and the sample or the sample ra rather with the respect and the care that it deserves. All right. So uh, following the malware handling standards, uh, it is supposed to be a zipped file and of course, password protected. Now, when you want to extract it, all you need to do is click on extract and the password for all pieces of malware samples are usually infected. Uh, and, uh, and other keywords that I'll get to uh, as we move along. But for now, uh, the password for this file is infected. Now, I'm going to be putting this, uh, the, I'm going to be uh, linking this in the description section if you want to download and uh, if you want to download it and follow along. Uh, again, it's a really interesting piece of malware that uh, we'll have a lot of fun analyzing. Um, 
So what we want to do is uh, we want to extract this here. And of course, I'm going to click on show password there and I'm going to say infected, right? Uh, whoops, sorry, that is the wrong password. So infected, I'm going to hit OK, and that's going to extract it for us. Uh, now, another safety precaution is the fact that there is no extension here. And that doesn't mean that it changes its uh, nature as an executable. The, the reason we're using one without uh, an identifiable uh, extension is for me to actually show you how important uh, signature verification is or file signature verification is. Um, so what I'm going to do is we're going to start off with a manual uh, verification or identification, sorry. Uh, using a hex editor and one that comes pre-packaged uh, with a flare VM and that is HXD or hex editor So we're just going to drag that onto hex uh, edit the hex editor here and immediately you can see that it gives us uh, our hexadecimal information here and uh, We have the file signature MZ. So that already tells us that we're dealing with a portable executable right so uh, you can see that the uh, the first two bytes are 4d and 5a so 0001 and that immediately tells us that we're dealing with a portable executable so 4d 5a and if i click on m for example it takes us to the first uh, to the first byte and if i click on z it takes us to the second byte so immediately we're able to identify that this is a portable executable right uh, now the other uh, the other file signature that you'll get usually or most commonly with portable executables is that it will define that this program cannot be run in DOS mode. However, you may not run into this all the time. And again, as I said, when to when talking about packing and obfuscation, that's something we have to cover in a in in the later video. So for now, let's just work with the file signatures that we are able to see. All right, so. Uh, when talking about w where the PE header actually begins, you can see it is de denoted right over here. And that is, of course, a 50 and 45 uh, in, in the exa hexadecimal table here. And you can see the various offsets. Um, so th this is where the PE header starts. All right. Now, that is uh, basically how to identify or how to perform file signature identification uh, with a hex editor. And of course, this is manually done. We can now use automated tools to identify this. So... What I'm going to do is let's close hex editor. Let's take a look at the other tools that we can use. Um, so let's try exe info PE. Now exe info PE is more to do with the actual PE headers. However, it does give us information about the type of executable we're dealing with, right? So let me just minimize that. So uh, you can see that we have the entry point and the file offset things we're not really interested in right now. Uh, however, if we take a look at uh, the file size or view, uh, if we view the file at offset here, you can see that it gives us the offset uh, and immediately we are able to identify it as well, again, uh, using uh, exe info PE. So 4D5A and this is MZ right over here. So that is your file signature. Uh, and of course, we have this program cannot be run in DOS mode. And if we look for the where the PE header starts, which is right over here. All right, so that is how to use exe info PE uh, just for file identification. Uh, and I'll be covering how to use it when, we talk, when we'll be talking about the PE headers. And uh, if you remember what I talked about in the slide, it tells us immediately right over here that it is not packed, right? So that's important to us because if it, uh, if it was packed, we want to know. We want to know that. So it tells us we can try Oli DBG version 2 or Oli Debugger or IDA version 7, right? So that's great. It tells us what tools we can use. And if it is packed, it will tell us uh, the, the, the packer that was used and how to unpack it. Uh, so that is how to use EXE Info PE. Now let's talk uh, about one of my favorite tools, which is a PE Studio, because of uh, the amount of comprehensive information it gives us. So we'll just load this up and immediately it gives us all the information we want in regards to this file. So we have the first bytes in hexadecimal, so 4, 4D5A. And we have the first bytes uh, in text, which uh, which is the file signature. So MZ immediately we know it is a uh, it is a PE or a portable executable, and uh, the file type is of the uh, dynamic link library. So it's a DLL file. Uh, so you can see that the CPU or the CPU architecture here is 32 bit. So it's given us all the information that we were looking for when I was defining the importance of file uh, identification or identifying the file type, right? So first of all, it gives us um, the operating system and the architecture. It then gives us the file type, which is dynamic. It's a, a DLL file. Uh, that is the file type rather. And then of course we know it is a portable executable because we have the first bytes of hexadecimal here. So 4D5A and the file signature MZ, 
right? So that is great. Uh, again, we're not going to be working with anything else right now. I simply wanted to cover file type identification. Um, now let's wind off with our last tool that I wanted to showcase, and that is a CFF Explorer. So if I drag this into CFF uh, Explorer, you can see that it tells us that the file type is a portable executable and it's 32 bit. And it also gives us uh, additional information like the hash and I'll get to using hashes in the next video and why they're so important. Um, all right. So that is pretty much how to perform file type identification. Very, very simple stuff, but very, very important as you can probably tell. Uh, hopefully uh, I've covered everything uh, in a way that is understandable. If you have any questions or suggestions, let me know in the comment section or you can post uh, a new question on the forum and we have tons of people who will be able to answer you and help you there. All right, so that is going to be it for this video and I'll be seeing you in the next video when we will be talking about hashes.